You're listening to Nixology on ESPN 1700. Buckle up as anything goes and having fun is the only rule we have. Now here's your host, Nick Apostolopoulos. All right, everybody. Ah, Welcome to another episode of Nixology. Thanks for joining us today. As the man said, I am your host, Nick Apostolopoulos, proprietor of 619 Vodka. Um, as always, you can follow us on uh, Facebook at facebook.com slash Nixology or, of course, our website, Nixology.com. In fact, if you hop up on Facebook today, we're doing a little giveaway. We have some tickets to the Mira Mesa Beer Festival going on this weekend. It's Mira Mesa Festival of Beers. I, got, I don't know. I'll look at it. i got to get that right later. Um, but we have those tickets. for. Uh, we're giving them away. We're giving away two pairs between now and Thursday. So get on there and, and, uh, and like the page and tag the post, and uh, you could win tickets to the Beer Fest. Um, no Babe of the Week this week, sadly, but I'm actually kind of excited because uh, we can do what I've been wanting to do for a little while now, which is do a, a whole Beer 101 episode. Um, we're lucky enough to have Dave Adams with us from Green Flash Brewing today, man. How's it going, Dave? Howdy. So, Dave, uh, let's go a little bit through your background. So, you started out working for Stone, right? I did, yeah. Okay. Nine years ago, started working at Stone. I was 21. Really? Yeah, and what were you doing over there when you started out? Uh, I was just bartending, bartending oh, cool. over in the restaurant at the. We opened the um, the World Bistro and Gardens. Oh, was that there, when that so opened? Yeah, okay, I was there. Cool. Um, you know, maybe like three, four months before it opened, doing training and stuff, and then got to be a part of the opening. It was really neat. Nice, cool. Well, yeah, and then so in addition to that, let me just go through your CV real quick. You worked for, well. You also worked at uh, Churchill's Pub, right? Yeah, Churchill's Pub. Which man, I used to work out there in Carlsbad, and we'd go there all the time. I cool. love that place. Yeah, it was. And uh, it's still around, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's still such around. A great spot, man. Do Doing awesome I stuff. I really like that place. Yeah, yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful beer bar. Um, and then somewhere along the way, you moved over to Green Flash. And uh, not only are you their, their director of beer education, but you're a certified Cicerone, right? That is correct. And I had to look that up. i got to be honest with you. That's okay. I looked it up this morning. And it's funny because if you look it up, Wikipedia just says a Cicerone is somebody that gives tours at like museums and galleries right and explain stuff and i was like okay well I'm, maybe i got it wrong and then i looked and but there's a whole certification program right and it's yes. basically is it general beer knowledge or how does it work yeah good question uh cicerone program is really cool they have um three well they had three levels for many years um and now they just added a fourth level like a couple days ago, actually. So you have a certified beer server, uh, which is an online exam uh, that I have, like, all my bartenders uh, are certified beer servers. And, um, like I said, online exam, multiple choice, all about kind of, yeah, general beer knowledge, like, you know, about distribution and, um, you know, about beer styles, about serving beer, about, you know, uh, just everything related, brewing beer, right. you know, just kind of an overall like 101 type thing. And then you move to the certified Cicerone level where it's about 150 fill in the blanks, four essays, a 12 part tasting and a demonstration. Essays? Yeah. Oh, you lost me right there. Right. Because I was about to ask you, like, is this something that would be cool for like a home brewer to do? To, is it... Is it like, are there courses you can learn, or is it mostly just the testing part? You got to go learn somewhere else. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's just testing. That's okay. all it is. And they do have, but they they've recently bolstered it up to where they do have like intensive programs that are like you know one day learning exercises based around the exams and things like that. Okay. Um, it's not focused a hundred percent on brewing. There's a little bit on brewing, but it's a, more about being like a well-rounded beer person. Right. So it's like, you know, home brewing is one thing, but it's also about learning how to like properly serve beer, store beer, ah, uh, okay. the history of the styles, you know, things like that. So it's a, it's much more overarching. <clears throat> gotcha. Yeah. Well, you still lost me at essay. I okay. mean, the whole reason, yeah, I know. Not and then there's the master Cicerone, right? Yeah. So I take that in November. Okay. More um, essays? More, yeah. It's about uh, 10 hours of essays. Really? It's a two day exam. Wow. So it's about 10 that's hours crazy. essays and then it's a whole day at a brewery after that and um just miscellaneous nice. you know who knows what ah uh, that's that's i mean that's intense dude and then yeah, you also teach intense. out at san diego state right yeah i do yeah i teach over at san diego state i teach the uh, front of the house management program as part of the craft business certificate extended studies program over there really neat and i just found out about that the other day the, yeah. the guys from iron fist were talking about that i didn't even know they had that like how long has that been going on at state that's pretty uh, cool yeah it's been a couple years now yeah uh been an awesome program it's it's really been neat. Well, no got wonder there's like response. nine thousand breweries in San Diego now. I <laughs> yeah, was just talking. I I've, been using, I've been bringing up this stat forever. There, but so when I researched it a couple weeks ago, it was 105 breweries, 50 
applications pending. Somebody told me this morning it's 109 and 41 now. But it's just insane that in a few months there are going to be over 150 breweries in San Diego. It's pretty darn nuts. Yeah. And yeah. you live in North Park. We were talking about this. I, I, I feel like every time I leave my house, I go, oh, oh, look, another brewery. Yeah, oh, brewery. And they're like, brewery. I feel like 80 of them are in North Park or something like that. Well, I think the cool new thing to do is to open up uh, like the tasting rooms and the in the more traffic Well, that's true, area, too, because so. yeah, I forgot about that, too. You Because yeah, I say you guys, because I'm, I'm, I'm bitter about the whole, yeah, we, we should be drinking a beer, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, we I, can do I, that. I was, I was just noticing we weren't drinking a beer. <laughs> we can do that um, in a second. But no, I was thinking about that because uh, I say that all the time because in the spirits world, we can't do things like that, although hopefully that'll change soon. But I forgot that, the, yeah. I, so I always kind of forget that that's the case, that, that, that breweries also have multiple tasting rooms, and so you see a lot of the you see what looks like a it looks like a bigger footprint than it is. Right. So you'll see like a commercial brewery operation, you know, that'll open a, an industrial park right. in Vista, let's say, yeah. and then they'll open up a, a cool little tasting room down in you know North Park, Normal Heights, things right. like that, and right. where you can you know, which uh, is awesome. Like Iron Fist just opened one down in uh, in Barrio Logan down there, which right. I haven't been to yet, but I want to go check it out. Yeah, there's but that's a cool spot for them. So yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so where's where's the I should know this, but I don't. Where's the main Green Flash operation? Uh, it's about three blocks down the road. Oh, from here? Oh, <laughs> yeah. sweet. We might have, uh, Mir- have to make a field trip after. Mira Mesa Boulevard and Flanders Drive. 6550 Mira Mesa Boulevard. All right, cool. Yep. Yeah, and then you guys have tasting rooms all over, right? And you just bought Alpine Brewing, too, so... Right. Um, so we have two, yeah, we have two kind of green flash tasting rooms. We have the one on Mira Mesa Boulevard that's like the main green flash tasting room. You know, big, huge, 4,000 square foot tasting room. Awesome beer garden. Robust tour program. Uh, do an awesome quiz night. You can buy beer to go there. Okay. Awesome. Eggs, growlers, whatever. Oh, God, we have our own your, food truck. Your That's beer to awesome. Go thing too. That's really annoying to the spirits people. Although so supposedly <laughs> we'll be able to sell bottles to the public soon. Yeah, supposedly. that's a silly antiquated law that yeah. needs to go away. Well, you know the thing is, it, it we there was a good. I say we. A lot of us thought it was going to take another four or five years, and it looks like it's going to happen this year, which is kind of cool. It seems like um, the stuff in the spirits world is moving along. It's moving along really fast. Yeah. When I started in this like five, four or five years ago, it was it was the dark ages, and right. now it's really starting to change. So yeah, that's good news. Cool. I think they see the growth of the beer industry and have to like kind of go well. Well, let's they, take another look. at and, this. and on top of that, I think too, what's happening is is they're they're uh, just like the beer world. They're just a lot of more people are starting to dive in. So even at the TTV level, right? They're getting. They're getting. Oh, I'm going to silence my phone. Um, they're getting a lot more applications. They're getting a lot more, you know. And, and so it's almost. I think it's. I look at it this way: the government's just lazy, and so sure. they're like, "Oh man, okay, we're getting all of these applications for things. Let's just make more stuff easier for the for them to do." Which is, they're not doing it for us; they're doing it because they're lazy. I think. Yeah, I think he, uh, the <laughs> end result is it. all we're looking for, though. So right, you know, no, however, I'm cool with however that. you want to do it. However it yeah. happens is great. <laughs> you want to push it forward? All good. Well, dude, I'm so excited because yeah. So I mean, I'm gonna take this whole hour and, and pick your brain in a beer one-on-one kind of thing. But but cool. first off, let's uh, let's um, let's try a beer. Cool, let's drinking? do it. So you brought like three or four, right? I brought three or four. All right, so um, get me started here. Okay, so a... the first one that we're going to kind of taste them in order of intensity. Okay. Uh, just so we don't you know, wreck our palates for, uh, yeah. for the yeah, crazy sure. stuff a little later on. So the first beer that we're going to try is uh, called Jibe Session IPA. Um, this is a beer that uh, it's a it's a boat maneuver jibe is um, oh yeah sailing okay i got yeah, it i get right? it now and, I and get so it. this so this is the first beer we've ever canned by the way i'm sitting here uh, looking at a can uh, first beer yeah, we just ran you know, them yesterday remind me to ask you about that later but go ahead cuz okay. i'm curious about the bottle and canning thing cuz it seems like i thought it'd be easier to do and it's not right yeah it's yeah. no okay so uh, yeah go ahead so yeah we um, you know nice super refreshing 4% alcohol session ipa like perfect can beer, you know, take it to the beach, take it to, you know, take it out on the boat with you, whatever it may be. Right. Um, but as in conjunction to this, we just ran the cans yesterday. Uh, September 23rd through the 27th is the J70 uh, North American Championship Yacht Cr- Club race. And we're going to be a sponsor of that. And the uh, the jibe is going to be there in full force and we're going to be doing cans. So Sweet. let's taste it. Awesome. Yeah, let's taste it. We got to take a break. So let's crack that open. We'll, we'll t- uh, and we'll taste that when we come back. And then I, I want to get into the whole hops and, and I'll hope you're one. I got a million questions for you, dude. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, cool. We'll be right back after this. Hey, Mr. Credit here. If you ever catch me at happy hour, you'll probably catch me drinking a vodka martini. I don't always drink vodka, but when I do, I drink 619 Vodka because it's local vodka from right here in San Diego. I know the owner, and you can meet him too. Go to 619vodka.com and think 619 Vodka when you're out there having a good time. That's 619vodka.com. And of course, remember to always drink responsibly. CS Keys here to tell you about San Diego's handcrafted ultra-premium vodka. 
619 Vodka. It's distilled and filtered five times, gluten-free, and made from 100% pure mountain spring water for a smooth, clean finish. It's a two-time silver medal winner and a two-time gold medal winner already in 2013. America's Finest City has America's Finest Vodka that everybody can experience. Just go to the website, 619vodka.com. If you know like I know, you better tell somebody. Start this football season by winning $2 million in week one at DraftKings.com. With One Week Fantasy at DraftKings, you can play when you want with the team you want. Just pick your contest, pick your team, and pick up your winnings. This isn't fantasy as usual. This is DraftKings. Welcome to the big time. Go to DraftKings.com now and use promo code GRIT to play for free for a shot at the $2 million top prize in the week one $10 million millionaire maker. Enter GRIT for a free entry now at DraftKings.com. College football's full of time-honored traditions like the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway. If you're a student or you want to nominate a student you know, go to drpeppertuition.com today and tell us your one-of-a-kind goal. One of last year's $100,000 one-of-a-kind winners was Sarah Roundtree. She chose to attend the University of Oregon to study psychology. Want to be a new part of this tradition? Head to drpeppertuition.com now to enter for official rules and details. Dr. Pepper always one of a kind available at walmart gillette's best blades close comfortable smooth and now they can save you up to 50 percent versus the other shave club's nine dollar per month plan that's not right excuse me did you guys give me the right script yeah that's it really wow we're as surprised as you that our best blades can save you up to 50 percent versus the other shave club join today at gilletteshaveclub.com Monthly ProGlide spin based on Nielsen Holmes campaign on 52 weeks in March 2015. Thank you for sowing the seeds of change. Thank you for trusting the movement. For giving them the opportunity. For taking the first step toward putting a stop to everyday politicians and to the same old political parties. Thank you for trusting in yourself and for using the power of your vote. The challenge has just begun. Citizen Movement. And now, back to Nixology on ESPN 1700. Brought to you by 619 Vodka, who reminds you to always drink responsibly. Find out more at 619vodka.com. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Right. Now you can't come. Well, welcome back to Nixology. <laughs> We're talking about the 9 million uh, beer festivals to go along with the 9,000 breweries we have. <laughs> um, but that said, a really good one. I'm going to get in trouble from uh, Kevin now. There's the 4th Annual Beer Mesa Festival Beers this weekend. Um, like I said, if you check us out on Facebook, Nixology, or Facebook.com slash Nixology, we're giving away uh, uh, two pairs of tickets to that. And, uh, yeah, so you guys are going to be there. The list is, is long and wide. This is going to be nice. Yeah, I think uh, Kevin does a great job. I've, I've worked with Kevin for several years, um, you know, done plenty of TV and radio ads with him, and I think he does a great job um, doing that festival. It's a fun one to go to. Yeah. Um, and it's you know close to all the other all the a lot of cool breweries. We got Green Flash, Alesmith, <coughs> Ballast Point. You know all in the same area. Uh, Rough Draft, Saint Archer. You know things like that. So there's like it's a cool um, you know brewery uh, hip and happening area. Yeah, yeah. No, I wish I could go, but we're going to be at a, a different event. In fact, I should mention that too. Um, on Saturday down at the Chula Vista Harbor, there's going to be the uh, Taco and Spirits Revolution uh, going on down there. So um, we're going to go and take. Uh, we're going to take some scorpion pepper infused vodka and Ooh, make some yeah. cool cocktails with it. I haven't figured out exactly what yet, but uh, yeah, come on down to the, if you're not going to the beer festival, come on down to the taco and spirits revolution. Cause that's going to be pretty fun. Awesome. Um, yeah, dude. So this IPA, this Jive IPA, it's yeah. an IPA, right? A session yeah, session IPA. IPA. Um, it's really good. I like it. Like you said, it's, 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 I think it's the perfect beer for a can. And we were talking in the break about how it's kind of, you know, everybody sort of associates cans with old school crappy beer, right? Yeah. But, but uh, it's starting to come around. I, the first people I saw do it was Mission Brewing, and they yeah. had like a giant, I, I thirty-two ounce can, can or something like that. They were like the biggest canned craft beer in the com- country or whatever. Um, but not to go crazy technical on everyone. Why is it so hard? I mean, I know there was a stigma of oh, craft beers come in glass or kegs, sure. right? Um, but it's also not the easiest thing in the world to, to can beer, right? It just takes a lot of different machinery and equipment and stuff? Or? Yeah, it's a completely different machine. And, uh, you know, people would ask us, I mean, now, the the big thing now is having the mobile canning guys. And so that's really where 
some of it is accomplished. Okay, wait, uh, this is news to me. So tell yeah. me, there's mobile canning guys? Yeah, it's a mobile canning guy. Uh, there's several of them okay. you know, that'll, that'll come around with the equipment on the truck, and they come and set up shop in your place and run the pipe for the beer, and you know, you just start running cans on it. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's kind of like an all-in-one. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really neat. And th- the issue that like a place like ours uh is that we're out of space we have a big giant bottling line <laughs> right. and, and we right. don't have like we can't put it you right. know Even people go why don't put you a big can line. yeah people right. are like why don't you can beer why don't you can beer it's right. like we don't have any room where would you put a bottling line i'll walk them into the you know, brewery and be like right. point to where <laughs> right. you would put a bottling <laughs> right. line Find me some free space for yeah for cans a canning line um so uh we came up with a cool compromise and we had uh the, the mobile canning guy come in i think the issue with cans from the beginning uh has been dissolved oxygen levels uh, have always been elevated in them because many of the early canning lines filled them kind of like growlers. So like the tops are off the cans and it just squirts the beer in there and you put the lid oh, on there. Okay, okay. Which and then the oxygen level is is elevated because that which the higher You're that basically aerating it as it's going in and yeah, yeah and there's and the, extra space on top. Yeah. Right, and the higher that level is the lower the shelf life is on the beer right but you know over the years that technology has been improved greatly and now we're seeing great do levels out of cans and you know the shelf life's a lot more stable and, right. and the hop care i mean really what that means from like a consumer standpoint too when i say like the beer goes bad quicker i don't mean like you're gonna die from right. drinking Just the it taste, the taste starts to yeah. fall and, and it's mostly the aroma it's like especially hoppy beers i think that's something that people you know may or may not know uh but when you dry hop a beer and you know we'll talk about this later but you know all that beautiful hop aroma everything people like about ipas is that that bold right. hop aroma you know right. obviously there's the sharp bitterness the clean characteristics but that hop aroma you know that big pine citrus burst right, right. zest out of it that fades the quickest with the do levels raised that's the first thing that goes so you know when you have a beer that's a month and a half old and two months old and you've already lost 90 percent of your <laughs> dry hop aroma right, it's right. like man that's yeah. no good but no this is great i hope they do it more because because the other problem was that you know okay i'm going to a friend's party i'll go grab a six pack of beer but if i'm going yeah. to the beach or if i'm going to the pool right. i don't want to take glass so now I'm buying Miller Lite. I don't yep. want to drink Miller Lite, but if I can now I know I can grab cans of of you know Jai IPA and take that to the beach with me. That's awesome. It's pretty rad, yeah. You know? And you know, golf courses, beach, yeah, all exactly. that. I didn't know? thought about that. Golf There's, courses, right? Yeah. All these places where you don't want to take glass around. Right. And we go yeah. to the golf you know, we'll go to the golf courses and, and they'll you know, hey, we'd love to have your beer, but right. can't right. you know, <laughs> right. We, right. we can't have it. So right. um yeah, no, it, it's a it's so a cool is, little niche market. Are the plans probably I I mean obviously you guys do a lot of different beers and seasonal things and stuff like that, but are sure. the plans to just, like, are, are, like, will Jive be available only in cans and other ones available only in bottles? How's yeah. that work? Yeah, I, I think we we don't really want to cannibalize the, the other products by doing multiple, like, you know, doing uh, Jive in can and Jive in a bottle because... Right. Usually, y- y- people are just going to pick one yeah, or the other. Yeah, and know, you only have so much shelf space. In the, you're not going to like go to the store everything. and pick up a jibe six pack of cans and a jibe six pack of bottles. You know, you're right. just going to get right. one right. or the other. So, um, yeah, and shelf space obviously limited. Like you said, I mean, there's uh, nine. What'd you say? Nine million breweries? Or I 9, think 000? it's nine nine thousand. Nine thousand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if there's nine thousand breweries. Think about all the shelf space <laughs> that there is to be had and divvied up between nine thousand people. I mean, it's a it's right. A lot. Right. Um, so you mentioned the hops on this, and I do want to talk about that because so I I I don't know if I actually said this before, but I used to homebrew. Oh, and now this was in the nineties. I mean, so that's okay. It was a long time ago. I still have all this gear sitting in my garage, and it hasn't been used in forever. Although I tell you, starting to do this show has like time to dust has, it off. Yeah, it's kind of re, it's kind of reinvigorated <laughs> me a little bit. Like, man, I need to get in home, get it home, and start brewing. Although the cool. problem is now, since there are so many breweries. I, I I mean I remember the stuff I used to homebrew. I thought it was pretty damn good, but I awesome. don't. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it really. I mean, it's because it was pretty damn good compared to Budweiser. The important you know, part about so, homebrewing is thinking that you do a good job. Yeah, that's the best part. Yeah. Well, and so I mean, it, it, but then it goes back to. All right. See, now I'm just in whiny mode. But it goes back to okay. Well, then I got. Do I do it from? Do I you know? Do I just get stuff already? The malt, you know, syrup, or do I do it from scratch? And yeah. Then, I mean, you can make pretty good beers. I got to be honest with you. With the you know, with the minimal minimal amount of ingredients. Sure. Yeah. Um, but so anyway, to segue back to my point okay. is that I used to home brew, and for me, hops were you boiled the thing toward the end. You threw some hops in. You boiled that a little bit more, and that's it. You were done. Like. But really, the sort of the art of hops, especially with like IPAs, right? Is you can you want to put some in 
during the during the boil, you know, and then some as finishing hops at the end, and that's what gives it all of its different characteristics, right? <coughs> yeah. And then, of course, there's 20 different kinds of hops you can use, probably probably more, but yeah, it's about 120. Okay. Um, or and with experimental hops added in, there's you know a litany, right? But uh, yeah, commercial hops maybe 100, 100 okay. to 150 somewhere around there. Right. Um, but yeah, to answer your question or you know to yeah, comment to on it, uh, <laughs> it's yeah, hops are used for three different parts of the beer. They're used for bittering, flavoring, and aroma. Okay. Um, and most beers that we have today, most craft beers are a blend of hops, unless they're you know marketed as otherwise. Like single hop beers right, were right. kind of a thing <laughs> for a while, still are kind of a thing. You know, so if you see a beer that says a oh, single hop, you know, mosaic or whatever it may be, that's, okay, okay, so. That's what it is. It's mosaic for bittering, flavoring, and aroma. Right. But, yeah, the majority of beers are, like, all all the beers that I brought today all have multiple hops in them. And they're all used in different parts of the process to provide different characteristics. Right. So if you want, you know, a high alpha acid hop, which is, like, the level of bitterness in the hop, basically, right. the level of resins, you want that you know, to be if you want a bitter IPA, you put it in right at the start of the right, rolling sorry, boil, right. and that's where you're going to isomerize. You're going to make those acids water soluble, right. get all the bitterness out of it. The later that you add it during the boil kettle, and then the later that you add it in general, you're talking more about the essential oils Just that are coming out where you're getting flavor and aroma okay. and things like that. Right. So on the cold side, you know, we like we had four hop additions throughout the boil kettle, like one at the beginning, uh, you know, quarter of the way through, halfway through, and then at the end. Right. And then we do one in the whirlpool which is like flavoring a little bit of aroma and then post fermentation we'll add another giant hop addition and that's our dry hop and that's I think what most people think of um, in their heads like whether they know it or right, not when right. they think that's of like oh I really hop. like that hop that's usually what they mean it's like oh, I right. like the aroma of that hop right you know um, so yeah I think that's like a really really important part about the beer is layering the hops uh, you know I get comments all the time and people say like oh your beer doesn't seem like it's as bitter as it says it is and I think that's a testament to oh, us layering the hops yeah, and but the, also too I, we've talked about this on past shows is is I'm really liking I I love bitter beers. I like IPAs. I like, yep. <clears throat> but I feel like they're getting better now because there. I feel like for a while there was a race to the hop. Like who could make sure. the most bitter beer? You know, who could make me pucker the minute I put the thing in my mouth? And I feel like that's gone away, thankfully. Because yeah, yeah I like hoppy beers, but I don't want to feel like I'm chewing on the hop bud right. in my mouth. And so I feel like it's tapered off a little bit. And and maybe those people are just expecting. Oh, back in the day hoppy beers were, you know, punch you in the nose kind of thing. Right. Um, so I kind of like where it's gone this way, you know, a little bit away from the hops. I think that, um, you know, a part of that, too, like the bitterness is is a product of how you use the hops. You know, like if you can use, right. like you can still, what I'm getting at is that you can still make a bitter beer. Like I brought some beers that are, are yeah. bitter beers today. Speaking that one's one. that one's not. Um, you know, that's a little low in bitterness, but I have some other beers that are kind of increasing in bitterness, and you'll see that they're not like killing you even right. though that they are the most you know technically bitter beers that you can make because right. they're 100 IBUs right um, there's you I think you'll find that they're not as insane and I think that's a product of like if you use the hops you know the right I don't want to say the right way but if you use the hops you know in a certain way you can achieve a high level of bitterness but also great flavor and great aroma right that makes it more of a linear experience and that makes sense I mean I'm sure I, I, I'm, I'm sure even for you guys right it's always the cool thing about beer is that it's always there's always new stuff to learn and try and change and whatever and I think yeah. maybe that was part of the byproduct of people just trying okay we'll make this as hoppy as we can sure not focusing on anything else and now they're focusing more on okay it's got to be hoppy but it's got to have flavor and whatnot too yeah absolutely so that's kind of cool yeah um i'm empty ready for the next one i am ready for the next one um yeah no so that's cool so that leads me to my next question too which is so with 120 hops out there and and things like that obviously you guys have you know um all, all the breweries do right have sort of your staple things that you make um but how much room is there for experimentation? Like, obviously, you're not using all 120 hops, and and how does that work? Do you guys, you know, is there like a constant little mad scientist room R and D thing going on where you guys are making stuff and throwing some of it away? And so, you know, how does that work at the brewery? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, we uh, just recently got online our uh, pilot system. So we have a 50-barrel brew house, and that means that every batch of beer that we make is 100 kegs of right. beer. Okay. So obviously you can't go too wild with and, that. Right, you know, with the experimentation, like, right. Well, these you know, 99 kegs work. suck. <laughs> like, that's it. Um, right. So 
we got a five barrel system and uh, that produces about eight kegs or so after yield. So, you know, eight kegs is like, we, we just throw it on in the tasting room. It's basically, uh, it's called the Genius Lab series, a really cool thing that we do uh, where anybody at the company, literally anyone at the company can come to us and ask to brew a beer and we like 99% of the time say yes. Uh, nice. And yeah, they just say like, hey, you know what? I want to brew this. Um, like one of our beers, for example, was this Baltic Porter. It's called Ristretto. Uh, um, this is actually pre-pilot system, but uh, some guys in the brewery, Ron Angelo, uh, Kevin Barnes, they came in and said, hey, we want to make uh, this Baltic Porter. It's going to have Belgian candy sugar. It's going to have cold brew coffee, a little lactose in there, like crazy fun <laughs> beer, you know, like lots of awesome. ingredients. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was ridiculous, amazing, and it was so amazing that we've made several batches, full size batches of it afterwards. Oh, okay, so that's, that's awesome. kind of the, the idea behind it. You know, okay. it's like let's go have fun. We don't care. You know, it's eight kegs. If it's great, if it's terrible, we're gonna put it on in the tasting room. Everybody's name gets on the board of who brewed it. So you know, you can invite your friends and be like, I made that beer. That's cool. It's really, really cool. And we, you know, we wanted to have a creative outlet for everybody, so everyone gets to experiment, have fun. You literally brew the beer. I mean, you dump the grain in. You're watching the system. <laughs> the brewers are. Teaching that you how is it so, works. so cool. Yeah, and then they keg it up, and you try it, and you go, cool, I made a great beer. Like, not so great, or whatever it may be, right, but, but the great ones right. move along, you know? And that's the whole idea, is like, one day, maybe your beer that you design gets bottled okay. and goes into our, like, front line lineup uh, for so a year cool. that would be so neat you know All right, now i'm gonna start i'm gonna be bra- i'm gonna be brainstorming and then weasel i know i don't work for you guys but i'm gonna <laughs> brainstorm and weasel my way in maybe i'll just rent the system for a week or something no yeah you can definitely brew uh, a beer with me because nice. i i do work there all right turns out so you can just we'll hit me up. up i do have some good ideas okay i'm right. ready so we're running over i'm gonna get uh, get in trouble we'll run over but this soul I- this soul style ip is really good so we'll take a break we'll come back we'll talk about that and then i want to hit you up about the uh no, I can't remember what it's called. We'll talk about it during the break, and we'll come back right after this. <laughs> okay. Hey, Mr. Credit here. If you ever catch me at happy hour, you'll probably catch me drinking a vodka martini. Now, I don't always drink vodka, but when I do, I drink 619 vodka because it's local vodka from right here in San Diego. I know the owner, and you can meet him too. Go to 619vodka.com and think 619 vodka when you're out there having a good time. That's 619vodka.com. And of course, remember to always drink responsibly. CS Keys here to tell you about San Diego's handcrafted ultra premium vodka, 619 Vodka. It's distilled and filtered five times, gluten free, and made for 100% pure mountain spring water for a smooth, clean finish. It's a two time silver medal winner and a two time gold medal winner already in 2013. America's Finest City has America's Finest Vodka that everybody can experience. Just go to the website, 619vodka.com. If you know like I know, you better tell somebody. This season, Jack in the Box is partnering with the San Diego Padres to support Big Brothers, Big Sisters of San Diego County. Each time the Padres jack one out of the park this season at home, Jack in the Box will donate $500 to Big Brothers, Big Sisters Operation Bigs program. Operation Bigs is a one-to-one mentorship program that pairs military children with volunteer bigs to spend time together each week. Thanks to Jack in the Box and the San Diego Padres for supporting Big Brothers, Big Sisters of San Diego County. Go to Fuller Honda, where they exceed your expectations from test drive to delivery. Their professional sales team is committed to a no-pressure, high-integrity approach to your ownership experience. Best of all, the new Honda lineup features some of the best fuel economy on the market, along with contemporary styling at affordable prices. The Fuller family has been servicing San Diegan's automotive needs for over 60 years. Fuller Honda, exit Auto Park Drive off the 805 freeway in the Chula Vista Auto Park. This is Brandon Tierney, and this is the CBS Sports Minute. One of the great things about social media is the immediate access it provides. Need an update on your team's quarterback battle? Just hop on Twitter, and there's a pretty good chance the local beat writers dissecting every snap in the most recent 7-on-7 drill. That's a good part. More access as a fan. The bad part? Where do you start? Trolls trying to get a retweet or rile somebody up, or more specifically, having messages distorted. So if you clicked on any of your usual websites yesterday or scanned Twitter, you were blasted with the following headline, RG3, quote, I'm the best quarterback in the NFL. Except he didn't really say that. Well, he did, but as usual, context was intentionally distorted. Still, that shouldn't be a license to manipulate the man's words. Once again, another example. The headline doesn't always match the story. I'm BT.
the martini lunches are gone, but so is the need for an old-school business phone system. More than 300,000 customers have dropped their hardware-heavy phone systems and elevated their business communications into the cloud with Ring Central. Set up multiple users' devices with voice, text, conferencing, Salesforce integration, and now online meetings with HD video. And manage your entire system for $24.99 a month per user. Elevate your business into the cloud with a smarter phone solution. Sign up for a free trial at ringcentral.com. I'm Jay Farner with some great news on how you could save an average of $3,000 per year on your mortgage. Call Quicken Loans now at 800-QUICKEN to see if you qualify for the government's Home Affordable Refinance Program, or HARP. The HARP guidelines have changed. There's less paperwork and often no appraisal required. Call 800-QUICKEN. That's 800-QUICKEN. Or visit quickenloans.com. Important terms and conditions apply. Call us for cost information. Equalizing lender. License law 50 states and home loss number 3030. And now, back to Nixology on ESPN 1700. Brought to you by 619 Vodka, who reminds you to always drink responsibly. Find out more at 619vodka.com. All right, welcome back. Um, we're here with uh, Dave Adams from Green Flash, the uh, certified Cicerone, all-around master, <laughs> beer guy. Um, so, okay, let's quickly talk about this. So we're yes. drinking the Stone Style IPA, Soul Style IPA. Soul Style IPA. And uh, what makes that, what, what's the Soul Style about? What's that mean? Yeah, so Soul Style is a, uh, it's like a surfing move when you're out on the nose and you kind of oh. lean back and uh, that's Soul Style. Okay, like, that makes sense. I just, yeah. I don't surf. He's. Uh, we even put a picture on it uh, right there, so you can see the guy kind of nice. okay. you know, just I've having a grand old time. Uh, but yeah, single IPA, uh, nice and bright and tropical, like some tangerine notes yeah, it's to it. Yeah, kind of fruity a little bit. I yeah, like it. Really yeah. cool, nice and balanced, very dry, very clean. Um, I really enjoy it. Just uh, a, a really kind of quintessential single IPA, just a really nice IPA to drink. Not too bitter, you know, not too crazy, just great, great beer. Nice. Um, and this also is available at uh, Qualcomm. Uh, it is? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we Very uh, cool. we introduced this beer last year at Qualcomm. At actually. Qualcomm? Yeah. Nice. So pretty neat. Yeah, no, and it's cool that, now you bring up Qualcomm, it's cool that they're starting to catch on to the, you know, they actually have the little crack, like, I remember when it, when it opened, um, there was literally one little spot somewhere in the corner of the Western Metal Supply Building where you could get oh, no, that's, a single that's beer. Huh? That's Petco. Oh, it is Petco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Qualcomm. Qualcomm, oh, where the Chargers play. They're not going to be there. Well, you guys, oh, you're, hey. you're too late. A day late and a dollar short. We said we might talk about sports. They were and now there I'm going to about it. Last year, and yeah. they're going to be there this year. All right. And All our right. beer. So you're not at Petco? You're just at we Qualcomm? We have like tons uh. and tons of booths there. Okay. No, we're not at Petco. Oh, why but not? But they have, they have jumped on the craft revolution. They have jumped on the craft thing. Yeah, Like I it's said, great. it used to be just one little spot, and now there's, you know, now it's all over the ballpark. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, you know, I, I'm a native San Diegan, huge Padres fan, and uh, I've always wondered that. You know, it's like, it's a destination place, it's a transplant town. Why is there not craft beer? It's one of, what, what we're known for. You right. know, it's like <clears throat> SeaWorld, Zoo, right. Convention Center, right. craft and beer. craft beer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. so... What's the deal? You know, in fact, like, I wonder what the numbers are. Like, I mean, do you have any idea? Like, there's uh, other beer towns, like Colorado's obviously had a lot of breweries and stuff like uh -huh. that. But are we, are we like far and away have the most craft breweries? I know, no, I know I there was a time there where we were winning all the medals everywhere, right? The yeah. San Diego, San Diego breweries. Yeah, now there's now there's a bunch. I mean, uh, uh, like in my opinion, I don't know. It's a super biased opinion because I'm from here, but sure. I think we have the best craft beer in the country as a whole. Right. Uh, in San Diego, if I had to pick, like I I couldn't think of one other city that has the amount, like the density of excellence. Well, of I was going to say breweries. not only the density of beer, right, but the density of brewers. Like I yeah. mean, and because everyone's sort of, you know. Um, like the craft beer community in San Diego is almost like a mentoring program for brewers too, and you get these for guys sure. who worked for he worked here and then worked and then went out on their own, and there and everyone's making amazing beer. Yeah, and I don't think the amount of breweries really says so much about sure. your no, town, that's what I'm you saying. know. And it's right. like it's much more about the quality. Like, you know, I I would rather have. 20 breweries in our town and have like 20 amazing breweries of the best, you know, the best in the world, right? Than I, you know, the other but way I feel around. Like we do. I, mean, like I feel thousand. like we really do have some of the best breweries. We in do, the, in no, the we do. We have amazing, amazing breweries. There's lots of new people that are opening up, doing great things. And yeah, no, it's really, really cool uh, to see it happening. So, yeah, in my opinion, I think we have the the most dense, the, the biggest density of excellence. I guess that's the best way that right. I could put it. I like is that. that 
you know, the there's a lot of breweries in San Diego, Write but there's a lot down. of really Let's get that website. Density <laughs> density of excellence. <laughs> yeah, I mean I think there's plenty of other towns that have a lot of breweries. I mean there's plenty of other towns that have uh, you know beer scenes that are exploding uh, or that you know have exploded in the past like Portland and stuff. Well, I was know. about to say I was about to There's a brewery every 10 feet. Yeah, but I was about to to I don't know. I I get a lot of flack from my friends. I, okay. I I went to Portland like 20 years ago and it was nothing. And then I went like a year ago because I never wanted to go back. I never had any reason to go back. And I was like, oh, you got to go to Portland. It's great. It's got this great craft brew scene, whatever. Uh-huh. And we went and I couldn't find it. I mean, first of all, there wasn't... I mean, we stayed in downtown, so maybe that was a bad idea, but there wasn't much to do there. But even the breweries we went to... I guess I just wasn't impressed, well, and, I, and so, and so I, think, I don't know what I don't know why that is. Right, but I wasn't impressed with Portland as a brewery scene. I, I so, feel like we I, I live in the best place in the world for beer right now. Yeah, well, uh, as I said, I agree with you. Right, um, but that being said, I think that that's an issue that happens when you have a lot of breweries. I mean, whenever you're going to have, you know, if you have five guys that make ridiculous beer, and then you have a hundred other people that go, hey, we want to do the, same, do the thing. same thing. Right. Like the odds of them all being of the same greatness are, are super low. Right. Uh, you know, it's right. non-existent. Right. So I think that, you know, that happens and, you know, and it, it's tricky. I mean, you want to, you want to, when you go visit a craft beer community, you go, especially when people think that like, oh, Portland, like is a great craft beer scene right. or like San Diego's great craft beer scene. And then they go out to maybe some breweries and don't have a great experience, and then it reflects as the on the community as a whole. Like, whole. oh, okay, well, never mind. I <clears throat> don't think like because Portland does have great craft beer, <laughs> but you know, maybe you went to some breweries that you didn't enjoy, and then uh, for you it goes well. Then that means to me, Portland doesn't have a great craft right. beer community because right. you know there weren't. I didn't go to a bunch of great craft beers, so that's um, you know it's tricky, and that's the part that you know I think San Diego is a label now because we've been making good beer for a while now, so now it's putting San Diego on your label is an important it's a thing. Huge you know? thing it's right. like Napa with wine, wine you know when you right. you go make a, a wine in Napa it's like you want to be in Napa because you want to put Napa on your label, <laughs> your label you know right. that's the most important part right so um, you know similar of similar fashion right well that's cool all right so during the break you, you refreshed me so we were talking about sensory vocabulary right that's what you're talking about offline so tell me I'd, yeah. I'd never heard that term until, honestly until you said it in the green room so yeah. And you teach you teach that too, right? So yeah. explain it to me. What like what is it, and, and why do I need to know it, and all that good stuff? Well, well know. why you need to know it is because <laughs> uh, it it will help you enjoy your beers better. Um, I usually teach it for uh, retail accounts and distributors and things like that. Okay, uh, mostly like staff training because it's an emphasis on on how to describe beer properly. I think you know how many times like the most frustrating thing for me is when you go into a bar and. You go, hey, what's up with that beer? I've never heard of it before, right. or you know, what's going on with it? And then the bartender goes, "It's list, good," they, and they list the ingredients. Or yeah, well, right. if you're lucky, right? Okay. I mean, usually it's like, it's good, <laughs> it's good. I really, I like, like it. it, or whatever. It's like the it's least, our most popular beer. Yeah, just right. like all right. things that just could not matter less. You right. know, just okay, great. Now I know still nothing about it, right? Except that you like it. You right. know, just completely invalid. So the yeah. So what I try to do is provide them information to be able to. Um, describe the beer objectively and not subjectively. I think that's the most important part because everybody has their favorite styles of beer. Everybody has their favorite things to drink. Sure. So, you know, some people say to me, like, well, I don't like lagers. And I'm like, okay, so, so uh, cool. So when somebody comes up and says, hey, I really like lagers, what do you recommend? You say, well, I don't like them, so I don't recommend any of them. <laughs> you know, right. obviously you right. can't do that. Right. So what you need to do is be well-rounded and be able to describe the beers objectively. So I teach them about how to break down the beers. Uh, so we break it down in into appearance, aroma, flavor, mouthfeel, and aftertaste. And we come up with a couple words for each of those things. And usually what I'll do is have a, a big room of people, you know, 50 or 60 people that I'm doing this class for, and I'll take all of their words combined and then turn it into like a sentence about the beer that you can use in like a <laughs> five to 10 second little quick, hey, what's up with that beer? Oh, well, it's got this beautiful golden uh, hue to it, nice clarity to it, you know, bright, right. clear clarity. Uh, it smells like pine and uh, fresh grapefruit zest and uh, a little bit of resin. It's got uh, medium to assertive bitterness and it finishes really clean and dry with a little bit of lingering bitterness as well. And it kind of paints the picture. I mean, that was a super quick explanation. It paints the picture exactly of what you're going to get right. when you order the beer. And to me, that's super important, you know, because, uh, and like we were talking about offline too, there's a million IPAs out there. Right. So what's the difference between I mean, do you just, like, 
you know, point to one and just go, oh, they're all the same because it's all an IPA. Obviously not, you know? Well, you know, <clears throat> that's a great point because that's what I do, right? I mean, that's that's what I do when I go out, I mean. I look at the menu and I go, oh, IPAs, and then I go, oh, I'll just pick one because I don't know. Right. Um, and you would think, actually, now that you're saying this, it's, it's like making amazing sense. You would think more places would do that, right? They would list a little descriptor of each beer. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. A few weeks ago, we had a guy in... Uh, Evan Bennett from from Psycho Sushi in North Park. Okay, and the guy is a sake savant. He, you know, it's one of those. He's forgotten more than I'll ever know. Um, but the problem with sake, it's even worse than beer, right? Is that there's is that is that it's really hard to know what's you know what what's that sake like? What's that sake like? Oh, it's yeah. dry. Okay, well, what right. does that mean? And so he's got a little system where he where he on his menu he he breaks them apart and says, okay, he's got like air, land, sea, whatever, and like so these are fruitier, drier. This these you know, and then but he's got when you go to the to the restaurant, he's got a little description under each one, you know, dry like almost what you're saying, not quite as long maybe, but it's it's not saying oh that's a dry you know, like it's dry sake or fruity sake, right? You know, but I'm so I'm curious now. I wonder why. Maybe maybe you know, maybe you don't. Why more places don't do that? Well, um, we were at Waypoint the other day in North Park, and they have a great beer list over there, but that's exactly what it is. It says so-and-so IPA Pasadena, so-and-so IPA San Diego, and you're like, right. okay, I guess. And, I mean, I don't mind so much because I'll try five IPAs and see which one I like. Sure. But I don't want, you know, it would be nice if you could have that. Why, don't, why isn't that more of a thing? Or is it maybe is that becoming a thing in the industry? Uh, I'm trying my best to make it a thing. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and I think it's like I dislike the culture of um, disallowing human er- interaction. Because uh, I think that as being a service industry guy my whole life, I sure. think that's the most important part. So, I mean, while I do think that it's nice to have the stuff on the menu, I think it's even more important to have all of your staff kind of trained on it and you know that's a huge emphasis in in the class at SDSU and things like that is that when you walk in you you know it's like when you go to a car car dealership the guy selling you the car should know the most about the car and just like when you walk into a restaurant the person selling you the food and beer should know the most about the food and beer and I've always felt that way and I feel like there's never been an emphasis on it and you see the emphasis on food and wine for a long time you know like they can tell me that cow's name and what kind of (laughs) blades of grass at eight, you know? And then I'm like, cool, what's up with that beer? Like, uh, it's light and good. And, you know, it's like... I mean, I'm... Because I'm with you, but I'm just going to play devil's advocate for a second, which is that... So I'll I'll use Waypoint as an example, because I... I, It was the first time I went, I loved it. The food was great. The beer was great. Um, But they had probably, I'm going to guess, 30, 35 beers on tap. Uh And then, I don't know, another 30, 40 bottles of beer. Um... Yeah, you're gonna train every every one of there on every one of those beers. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. All right. No hesitation. Okay, At, all the time. I mean, always. I guess if your if your job if you're presenting yourself as hey we're this we're this place that serves thirty beers, right? Then you should know about them. I guess. Well, what but are you this, gonna be a scratch farm to table restaurant and not know anything about the food? Like, of course you want. Well, no, you but know. It's, but it's your menu and it's you control it. It doesn't change. But if you're moving, sure. ta- if you're changing tap handles out and doing new stuff all the time, and yeah, you know, try it all the time. Always have information about the beers. Always, always, always. All right. Yeah, for sure. I don't think it's a difficult thing to do. I know those guys do a lot of training at Waypoint specifically, right, and right. I think it's a huge part of no, it. No, and mean, they were good. Like, I, it's funny because I bring them up as an example, but they really did help us pick the beers. I mean, yeah. they're like, "Oh, if you like this, if you like that, try this and try that," and it was it was good. Which is perfect. Um, That's exactly <laughs> the experience that you should have at a great craft beer bar. That you should be able to come in and go, "Hey, I like these flavors," and then your server should be able to go, "Cool." This is, you know, here's this, which is kind of like this, and here's this, which is kind of like this. And you go, great. You know, they ne- that's it's their job to be the expert, not the consumer's job to be the expert right. about what they're ordering. And that's how I've always felt about it. So trying to get that information out there, I think, is, is really important to, like, put an emphasis on education. Like, you're selling all these items, you know, like... Yeah, Go maybe you it. need to have a person. I guess I don't know. I don't know why I'm trying to defend because I because I generally agree with you, but I'm thinking, okay, like I go to a restaurant, and the wine list is 300 wines long. Yeah, they have one person there that knows all the wines, but not the yeah. entire staff, right? So maybe you have a beer guy that runs around going, "I know all the beers here." Well, I don't know. I mean, I think a beer a good, sommelier I, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you could have that, which is what <laughs> that's what the you know Cicerone program is. But right. um, yeah, I think I think it's n- not unreasonable to have you know 20 beers on a list and to have your whole staff know what they are. The basics. Yeah, uh, you know. that makes sense. That's fair enough. All right. Well, I'm out of beer again, and we're up against a break, so we'll take a quick break, and then we've got two more to get through. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's we're going to start it. drinking fast. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back right after this. 
You're listening to Nixology on ESPN 1700. Brought to you by 619 Vodka, who reminds you to always drink responsibly. Find out more at 619vodka.com. Hey, Mr. Credit here. If you ever catch me at happy hour, you'll probably catch me drinking a vodka martini. I don't always drink vodka, but when I do, I drink 619 Vodka because it's local vodka from right here in San Diego. I know the owner, and you can meet him too. Go to 619vodka.com and think 619 Vodka when you're out there having a good time. That's 619vodka.com. And of course, remember to always drink responsibly. CS Keys here to tell you about San Diego's handcrafted ultra-premium vodka, 619 Vodka. It's distilled and filtered five times, gluten-free, and made from 100% pure mountain spring water for a smooth, clean finish. It's a two-time silver medal winner and a two-time gold medal winner already in 2013. America's Finest City has America's Finest Vodka that everybody can experience. Just go to the website, 619vodka.com. If you know like I know, you better tell somebody. In the August edition of Consumers Magazine, learn to read the new nutritional information tags that, by law, must now appear on the front of food and non-alcoholic beverage packaging. Their quality study of laptops and desk computers will tell you which models have excellent performance and battery duration so you can invest your money better. And discover what flavored milks and dairy products don't have the nutrients they state on their tags or are high in sugar. Consumers Magazine. Use it and save. The teaching evaluation is a triumph for Mexican teachers. Thanks to it, teachers will be acknowledged and promoted for their capabilities and merits. Thousands of teachers will benefit. They'll be better prepared, earn more, and have more job security. Guaranteeing the labor rights of teachers ensures a better education for the children of Mexico. Secretary of Public Education, Government of the Republic. This program is public, unrelated to any political party, and shall not be used for purposes other than stated in the program. It's summertime, which means it's Sonic time. Sonic has been America's favorite drive-in for nearly 60 years. At Sonic, you can visit the drive-thru, you can dine in on the patio, or you can park in a drive-in stall and place your orders from your car. Check out premium beef, hot dogs, foot-long quarter-pound conies, handmade onion rings, and don't forget the cherry limeys. Sonic uses all the best real ice cream for all shakes and blasts, which are half off after 8 p.m. all summer long. Up your game with over 25 flavors of slush and three types of candy slushes. It's time to get slushed. This is how you suck. Last football season, DraftKings crowned more millionaires than any one-week fantasy sports site anywhere. And this season, the prizes are even bigger. So join Mike from New Hampshire, or Mickey Millions as his friends call him, and become the next fantasy football millionaire. This isn't fantasy as usual. This is DraftKings. Welcome to the big time. Go to DraftKings.com now and use promo code GRIT to play free for a shot at $2 million in the week one $10 million millionaire maker. That's GRIT for free entry at DraftKings.com. And now, back to Nixology on ESPN 1700. Brought to you by 619 Vodka, who reminds you to always drink responsibly. Find out more at 619vodka.com. All right, welcome back to Nixology. We're here with Dave Adams from uh, Green Flash Brewing. Um, what are we drinking now, Dave? This Ooh. is really good. Yeah, King cool. of Hop. I'm sorry. So did, this guy was reading the bottle. It says King of Hops. Is that yeah, yeah. It it's called Imperial IPA. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is a beer that we've had for a really long time. Uh, it's actually a really unique beer. Um, By the way, did somebody tell you I like IPAs? Because you, your selection today is just right up my alley. No, I just uh, <laughs> this is like a perfect. I'm like, wow, another IPA. Awesome. I just I did, did a kind of <laughs> a little run of you know session IPA, single IPA, and then I got a double and a triple IPA. So oh, kind of just had okay. some fun. And then double and triple is just what does that designation really mean? Uh, it just means more, more of hopping. everything. So okay. it's like yeah, bigger, you know, more ingredients, more alcohol, more uh, hops, more right. more everything. Right. You know, just bolder. Cool. Um, so yeah, this beer is Imperial IPA uh, or Double IPA. Those kind of terms are kind of synonymous uh, out in the marketplace. So it's a nine percent beer. Uh, you know, a little higher in alcohol, uh, but you can well, you can't really see right now. But if uh, if we sorry, had, I I brought plastic styrofoam cups. It's my fault. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I need to start. I will start carrying around glassware for the show. And I, I, I'd say this only because I'm really am embarrassed. We are I'm, I'm, I, the whole show is about nixology and drinking and what and I should and I. <clears throat> he's these he, are actually a downgrade because usually I have the <laughs> the the plastic cups from the Delmar from the track. Okay, so those are at least not styrofoam, but they're still. Yeah. I need to bring glassware. Well, I no, will, you have inspired me. 
to, bring, okay. to, to A, start bringing glassware, and B, I'm going to start grilling everyone who serves me a beer. Like, tell me more about the damn beer. Yeah, for reals. <laughs> like, yeah, you want to taste it? No, I don't. I want you to tell me about right, it. Right, right. Um, so, no, we're actually drinking out of uh, beautiful Riedel Shiraz wine glasses right now. Uh, and you can see, because we're on the radio, right? Yeah. And uh, the, you the, video, can, the video camera's over there. And yeah, you can them. see yeah. uh, the beautiful uh, golden clear hue to this beer. Uh, anyway, but yeah, really nice beer. The unique part about this beer is that we use uh, two hops in this beer, Summit and Nugget. Uh, they both come from the Pacific Northwest, Yakima Valley, Washington area. Um, and Summit is not traditionally used. We use them all throughout the beer. Okay. Uh, and Summit is a very unique smell, uh, smelling hop, and it's not traditionally used for dry hopping. Uh, most of the time, it's a very high alpha acid hop, which means that it has okay. a lot of bitterness content to it. So a lot of times it's used for uh, bittering, uh, widely used for bittering, because it's up there at the top of bittering hops, but never really used for uh, dry hopping. And so what you get out of it is a blend of nugget, which is a more traditional West Coast style hop, lots of pine, uh, citrus, some like fruity characteristics to it. Um, but then you have Summit, which uh, we call it like when we go up and do hop evaluations up in Yakima, we call it FOG, which is funky onion garlic. Uh, <laughs> okay. So it sounds horrendous, uh, but in actuality, it's a really unique uh, part of the beer, and I think it really lends itself. I've always been a huge fan of, of this beer well before I worked at Green Flash. It's super dry and clean, and the thing that I like about it the most is that. That it's very hop focused and not malt focused. Most imperial IPAs, double IPAs that are nine percent are going to have a lot of caramel malt right. and a lot of like chewy resinous yeah, no, characters. This is really light and super clean, yeah. super dry. And so when I was talking about bitterness earlier, and you were like bitterness crushing, you know, right. for sure. This beer is 101 IBUs. Right. It's the top of the scale. Right. And that's what I meant. It's like it's not it doesn't it doesn't, not, it doesn't, doesn't taste, taste like that to you, right? No, and it and it's it's kind of I'm, I'm going to try and use my words. It's kind of up front and it's got a. Like it, it's a nice smooth taste, but the finish goes away quickly. It doesn't like sit in your mouth, and and you're not you don't feel like you just swallowed a hop. You right. Know? Yeah, it's really nice. I like and that this a lot. is the most bitter that you can make it. It's just that it happens to be, I think, layered really well, right. and it makes it a linear experience. So yeah. it's yeah, it is super hoppy, but it's not bludgeoning you with bitterness hops because they're you know layered throughout. Right. So, right. Uh, very cool beer. Um, so I want to talk really quickly again about the uh, Miramace Festival beers. You guys are going to be there. You don't probably know what you're taking out to sample there, do you? I don't. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, make sure you go to our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Nixology. Look for the post. I put it up this morning, so it's already there. You can win a couple pairs of tickets. So you guys are going to be at that. Um, yes. I want to mention that uh, for the industry folks in the world, um, Florence having their one or year anniversary this week. That's tonight or tomorrow? I can't remember. I think it's Thursday, actually. Um, but the Florent one year anniversary, that's going to be pretty fun. Um, don't forget, we're going to be at the um, Taco and Spirits Revolution in Chula Vista, which should be pretty awesome. They're, they're going to actually have three different sections, the Taco and Spirits thing. There's going to be a separate um, <clears throat> distilled spirits tasting area. And uh, it should be a fun show, or a fun event. And then um, you're pouring the triple right now really quick. We have uh, like a minute, minute and a half left. Tell us about your, again about the event coming up uh, later this month. Yeah, so... Oh. Sorry, Sorry <laughs> tricky. Uh, so, <laughs> um, the we have a huge event coming up uh, on August 29th. It's called Treasure Chest, a uh, big festival that we do every year. And where and, is it at? Uh, it's at the brewery. Oh, okay. Six five five zero Mira Mesa Boulevard. Um, you can buy tickets online on our website, greenflashbrew.com. And then send me the links, and we'll put them up on Nixology and everything too. Awesome, so. appreciate yeah. it. Um, it is an amazing festival. We try really hard with it. We make a bunch of crazy cast condition beers that you've never had before. So a lot of our beers with weird fruits and spices and just one-off beers of everything. Oh, just for the event? Just for the oh, event. Oh, that's awesome. And then okay. we do crazy food pairings. We'll have... Um, a bunch of re 10, 12 restaurants that we pair up all the food with, with like really high quality, excellent food. Uh, it's going to be a very, very cool festival. So Sweet. get your tickets. It sells out every year. Mm -hmm. So and buy them while you can. Too, right? And it's a huge breast cancer awareness fundraiser for uh, Komen for the Cure, which is the Susan G. Komen San Diego right. branch. Um, I think we gave them close to $20,000 last year. So uh, we're, we're raising money for breast cancer awareness. So, you know, come support the cause. It's also a national event. We make a beer 
beer for it every year and we're going to send it out nationally and all the bars that purchase it contribute money towards the cause as well so anytime you see it wherever you're listening from you know grab a pint of it grab a bottle of it all the money goes to charity awesome yeah sweet what's it gonna be called the beer treasure chest oh just treasure chest yep that's it. awesome dude yeah. sweet well uh that's it man we're out of time cool thanks for coming thanks for having me let me let me take a quick sip of this triple do it Oh, that's good, too. Good stuff, man. <laughs> Green All right, bullet. Well, dude, awesome job. Thank you. Thank I you. I actually have like 900 more questions, but we'll have to make it another time, dude. You'll have to come back. We'll do it again. All right, guys. That was Dave Adams from Green Flash Brewing. You're listening to Nixology. We'll see you here again next week. Thank you for listening to Nixology on ESPN 1700, hosted by Nick Apostolopoulos. Nick is the owner of 619 Vodka. Find out more about this locally owned vodka at 619vodka.com. Yeah.